Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Yes, I am in the third row, the back, back row of my uh, Tesla Model Y. This is a seven seater. They call it a seven seater, but really it's probably closer to six, but in a pinch, you can do seven. Uh, just like the third row. The third row, it's good, but only in a pinch. Like, anyways, I'm not going to get into the whole pros and cons about the seven seaters. What I want to do in this video, just show you some tips and tricks. If you do have a seven seater, some, some things that I've learned over the last year, I've had this for exactly a year and I've probably used this uh, third row maybe half a dozen times, but I want to show you uh, just some of the tips and tricks in terms of maintenance and stuff like that, of what you can expect in a third row. But before we go any further, folks, just a reminder to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button. It helps the channel out a lot. And this is what this channel brings you. If you're not subscribed already, this is what this channel brings you. It brings you the tips and tricks and stuff like that. Things that you don't see on every other uh, Tesla channel. Uh, things that are a little different, a little quirky, a little test, a little product reviews and stuff like that. And uh, I think you'll enjoy it if you're not a subscriber. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let's get to it. Okay, let's just get the uh, elephant out of the room right now. It is small back here. I'm not a big person. It is small back here. It's probably not made for adults for a long period of time. If you're going like 10 minutes, 15 minutes down the road, yeah, someone I'd say five, six or shorter could probably fit in here. Let me just close the, the, the trunk and show you how much headroom I have in here. I'm only um, five foot three shorter than most, but when the trunk comes down, it doesn't hit my head, but I'm pretty close. I've got my hat on and I've probably got an inch and a half, two inches before I hit the uh, thing, the, the glass. So I fit in here, but would I want to be back here very, very long? In, in terms of uh, leg room, when the seats come back, and that's one of the good things with the third row getting the seven seater, the middle row, the second row can go up and down, back and forth, pretty good and one of the bonuses is you can recline the second row which it reclines you know a few degrees which can help on long road trips even if you're not using the third row it's good to have that option that you can recline the uh, second row and uh, lay back and enjoy the drive so we're just going to open this up for ventilation because one of the pros if you're getting a seven seater don't forget folks there is no heating or air conditioning no vents whatsoever back here uh, i'll show you a little tip a little trick that you can do to uh, alleviate that if the kids are back here and they're getting hot or they're getting cold, I'll show you a little uh, trick. But just wanted to show you, the, in, in terms of the leg room, like I was saying, once these, uh, the second row comes down and everything, there's not a lot of room here. Uh, it's a little claustrophobic. For kids, it's no problem. My 10 year old son, he's small too. He can, he loves it back here and he, he takes his shoes off and uh, there's lots of room. Now keep in mind, as of this filming, there's probably only two or three manufacturers that carry a third row liner or mat, but one of the companies that carries the third row liner is Tuxmat, and I'm in the process of getting that, and uh, it'll be perfect back here, then you won't have any issues. So let me come out of here and show you some of the tips and tricks that I've been talking about. There's nothing graceful about coming out of here, but you can get out. Okay, let's start by showing you the trunk area here. Once these uh, third row seats are actually up and I'll tell you why they're up and why they should be up. But here's this, I guess a platform, if you don't call it, want to call it a privacy cover, you call it a platform. It's reversible, it goes both ways. As you can see, if you want it high up and you want more stuff stored underneath here, as you can see, storage is the same, just as the five seater. Uh, you have plenty of room in this, uh, what I call a sub trunk, or sorry, a sub trunk. Uh, you lots of room there and then when this cover goes up you can have it like this so it sits up high or it's reversible you can turn it around and you can have it a little bit lower if you need taller things in here and you need a little bit more room you pro probably give you about another couple inches so you don't have as much room here but you have more a couple more inches there and of course you've got the side pockets for storage and stuff like that there too that's the same as the five seater Okay, let me show you quickly what storage space you have when the third row is down. You put the headrest down, you press this button, you press this button, and that's the uh, space now. Because I have the lower one here, there is a dip, but you can fix that. Just turn this around, put it like this, and now it's completely flush. Uh, it's got maybe a half an inch difference between here and where the uh, back of the third row is. But then you've got that, that uh, space here. You can move the seat belts out of the way, um, the straps. I'll tell you why my straps are like this. You know what, let me show you that right now. I'll tell you exactly why the straps are like this. 
Okay, folks, as you can see, all the seats are up. Let me show you what happens, uh, why I like to prefer to keep the third row up unless I need it. Now, obviously, if I need it, I'll put them down and then I have more storage space and, as I need it. But why I keep it up is I find that when, and I've actually seen it myself and from others, when you have this down, and let me just put it how it would normally be, put the seat belts to the front and just turn it, put them down now. Now what happens, in my opinion, let me go around and show you to the other side. Get to the back here. Now, what happens is when you have this down like this and the seat belts are underneath here, as you can see, see the buckle there, the seat belt buckle right here? Well, what happens over time is this sits down here for weeks or months, like depends on how often you use it. But let's just say you don't use it a lot and you keep it this way because you want to access more stuff in the trunk, which is fine. But what happens over time, and like I said, I've seen it before and I've actually experienced it, is this buckle here gets imprinted into the leather right here after some time. Now, most will say, yeah, it'll go away after a while and it probably will. But what's more important, especially if you have white seats. Now, this is more, I do this more, I think for the white seats more than the actual buckle imprint for the white seats. You notice they have a black belt, which is good. You, you don't want a light colored like a white belt because over time it will stain and soil and stuff and, and you'll see the discoloration. So it's good that it's black, but what happens over time, if you keep the seat belt just the way it is there, the way it's designed and where it naturally just, just sits there, after some time, you will get a black transfer and discoloration onto the white seats. Now, I don't know if that comes out. I don't want to take a chance. So what I do is I move the buckle. Let me move around to this side. I get into the habit of just taking a little slack out, moving the buckle to the, or at least the strap to this side, then coming around here, get the buckle. You don't have to get the buckle, but I'm a little OCD, so I get the buckle too. And just leave the buckle here and just leave it dangling there. And the good thing is whenever you need to put it down, you can put it down. And the beauty with this is once it's down here like this and it's and you've got the buckle here, if you need to pull these up, now someone that's got longer arms can reach over and grab the back of the headrest there or, or the top of the seat and pull it up. I can't, I'm short, I got short arms. So the best thing for me is while the buckle is here, you just grab the buckle now you have to hold this part down. This is a design flaw from Tesla. I don't know why they did it this way and they didn't anchor it better, but this little carpeted edge here, you have to hold down because I find if you don't, it gets caught on this cover here and it bends it. So hold this down with one hand, grab the other hand, pull it up, pull it so when, when you pull the seat belt, it doesn't just pull like that. Pull it so like quickly, swiftly, so it locks and then you can pull it up and you can bring it up. See. I don't have a buckle on this side. So if I was to need to pull it up, I have to stretch and reach all the way to the back and pull it up. You still gotta hold this part down because see, I don't know if you saw it there, it gets caught on that uh, and then you pull it up. Now, if I move the buckle over and the strap over to this side, now they're both on this side. And uh, when I put them down, the buckle stays. And if I need to lift it up again, pull down this side, pull, pull the buckle, let it go. Do the same thing for this side. Hold the buckle, pull it tight, hold it down here, pull it up, and then the buckles can just relax. The reason I put these headrests up, this is just the OCD part of me. The reason I put them up is when I'm driving in the, in the front seat, I can tell just by looking in the rear view mirror, if I can see the headrest, I know the seats are up. If I can't see the headrest, I know they're down and it reminds me I've got to go pull them up if I've got nothing back here that I need the space for. Another quick tip is if you're in a back seat like this, and like I was saying about there's no vents or no, nothing back here for airflow, uh, for AC or for heat, what you can do, what we've done with, with our kids in the back seat when they're back here every now and then, obviously if you've got all seven rows, or sorry, all seven seats occupied, you can't do this. But if you've got just six and there's nobody in the middle seat here and you're not using it, it's got a little release here for the, this is usually where the armrest or the center uh, second row person would sit because there's a seat belt for this. But if it's not occupied, like I said, and you're not using the, the armrest and the cup holder, put it down. It flips down. You got this stupid bar in the way. Once again, there's nothing you can do about that. I wouldn't even call that a design flaw. That's just, it is what it is, right? So you got that in the way, but then you've 
open it up here. There's no blocking of airflow or anything. You can get the airflow from the front. You can get the airflow, I guess, maybe a little bit from the, the center air vents where the second row is for those passengers. But you've got some airflow. And, you know, you can also talk to the uh, occupants in the second row and the first row. And the people in the third row don't feel like they're, like, left out. So we find that when we are on road trips or any trips where the kids or someone's in the back seat, we put this one down. And... Uh, Main reason for airflow and for also, you know, so people can talk to one another. With this up, you can just pull it up. It's like a wall. You're, you're really divided back here and you feel like almost trapped, very claustrophobic. But you put that down and you have no issues. Okay, well, I was telling you how it reclines. Now, right down here, by if you're sitting in it, it would be right next to your leg on the outside. There's a little button here. If you press that, you can see how it can recline that much. I don't know if you can see with the difference between this and the other row there that's in black there. So you can bring it up. And this, this is a way you can close it completely too. But if you don't want to close it, and you want to bring it back to where the other one was, and as you can see, they're all lined up. But when you press this, and you put, press back, now you can recline. It's quite a bit as you can see there. So it makes a good difference. Okay, the second row, it moves in so many different directions. It's very confusing. After a year, I still haven't figured it out fully. There's a switch here. There's a switch here, like I showed you. And then one in between your legs at the front bottom, there's a bar, just like a traditional bar where you lift up and it does different things. So let me try to sh walk you through what the second row does. So this right on the top of the uh, chair by the headrest, you press this and this is for the person that's in the third row to get out. Or if you want to put someone back there, you press that and this stays in, t in position where it is here, but it just goes forward, slides forwards on rails and then you have access to the uh, third row. And then when you're ready to push it back, you just push it back. You don't have to press this. You can press this, but you don't need to. As you can hear, it makes a lot of mechanical sounds and everything as you're doing it. Okay, moving on to the, uh, the, the front lever. If you pull this bar up, it's, this moves it forward and backwards. As you can see, it's near the front where is probably the minimal amount of uh, leg room for the second row passengers. But if you, you can move it all the way to the back. If there's no one back there and you're not using the third row, move it all the way to the back. As you can see here, look at all the room that the uh, second row passengers have here now. So that's what I, that, that's the difference as you can see. I don't know if you can see the uh, other chair over there. That's the difference. It's probably a good four or five inches. So maybe even more. So keep it back there and but if you do need to adjust it, you know, you can adjust it back and forth. If you need to have someone in the back row, in the third row, you can go somewhere like halfway point. So they have leg room, but the second row passengers also have leg room. It's the best of both worlds. We usually keep it back here because like I said, the third row is not occupied all the time. Okay, and then this middle button right here by your thigh, like I was saying, what it does mainly is uh, do the headrest back and forth, not the headrest, but the backrest. It reclines it back and forth, but also what you do is you hold it down for two seconds and let go. It folds the second row flat, so you can fold the second and third row flat so you can maximize the uh, storage capabilities of the Model Y. If you need to put something big in here and long, you can do it. We've done this a handful of times. Uh, just when you do it, just make sure that it's uh, pushed back to as far as it can go. Because if it's pushed up here and you do this, as you can see, the headrest hits the back seat of the first row, depending on where, how far up or back the first row is, so, or the driver's seat is. So best to avoid that is just put it all the way back, two seconds, and it folds out. There are also some buttons in the trunk there, as you can see, that you can uh, remotely fold these down to. Another feature I almost forgot is if you're in the back seat here in the third row and you want to slide the seat back and forth to give you more leg room as you can see more leg room all you do is you hold on to this instead of just pressing it quickly and releasing it hold on to it and it can actually slide the seat forward and backwards as you can see press it again i'll show you hold it and as you can see it can slide it forward backwards where you where you have it where you want it or when you get it where you want it let go of the button and it'll stay in that position so as you can see now there's not a lot of right leg room for the second row passengers, but if you're in the third row, you got plenty of leg room now. Okay, folks, so there you have it. That is the third row and the seven-seater, a little 
introduction and a little uh, tips and tricks on what to do, especially if you have white seats. Like I said, the buckle thing is a, a big thing. Uh, if you have small kids and it's really hot out or really cold out and you're in a third row and they're not uh, dressed for the climate and you want to keep them warm or cool, that middle access seat thing is uh, also handy. So there you have it. Let me know if there's anything I missed. If you've got a third row or if you're thinking about a third row, if you got any other questions that I might not have uh, answered in this video, let me know down in the comments below. We'll talk more about it then. But if I missed anything and you do have a third row that you find interesting, let me know and uh, put it down in the chat and we'll discuss it and other people can see. So that's all I got. If you're still with me, folks, after all this, uh, you're a trooper. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in and we will catch you later. Bye bye. It actually closes a lot harder than in here than it does outside. It's outside, it sounds like it just gently closes and then secures. Here, it sounds like it's actually slamming.